Good afternoon, Your Excellencies, um, ladies and gentlemen. On behalf of the Lee Kuan Yew School of Public Policy, I have the pleasure of welcoming you and thanking you for attending this important public lecture. On the 30th of April, I had the pleasure of uh, chairing the public lecture of the Director General of UNESCO, Madam Irina Bokova. And today I have um, the pleasure of chairing the public lecture of the head of another UN agency, the Director General of the International Atomic Energy Agency, Ambassador Yukia Amano. In accordance with the Mabubani Co ground rule, I will make three points in my introductory remarks. It was actually my rule, but he is also um, claim intellectual property rights. Um, so first, I would like to share with, um, with you uh, a few basic facts about the history, the agenda, and the work of IAEA. The IAEA was established following a visionary address entitled Atoms for Peace, delivered by President Dwight Eisenhower to the United Nations in December 1953. In this visionary address, President Eisenhower proposed that the nuclear power should, and I quote, make joint contributions from their stockpiles of normal uranium and fissionable materials to an IAEA. The most important task of the envisaged IAEA is to devise methods whereby this fissionable material would be allocated to serve the peaceful pursuits of mankind." Unquote. This was a truly visionary idea. But unfortunately for the world, the other nuclear powers uh, did not share President Eisenhower's vision. In any case, <clears throat> on the 29th of July, 1957, the IAEA was formally established with its headquarters in Vienna, Austria. The IAEA <clears throat> has essentially two agendas, a positive agenda and a negative agenda. The positive agenda is to promote the peaceful uses of nuclear energy. The negative agenda is to prevent the military use of nuclear materials. In other words, to prevent the proliferation of nuclear weapons. In 1970, the UN adopted a landmark international agreement, the Nuclear Non-Proliferation Treaty, usually referred to as NPT. Under this landmark treaty, a grand bargain was made between the nuclear powers and the rest of the world. And the quid pro quo was that the nuclear powers would reduce their nuclear weapons with the ultimate goal of eliminating all nuclear weapons. And in return, the rest of the world would commit themselves to refrain from acquiring nuclear weapons. This was the essential uh, raison d'etre of the NPT. The IAEA has um, currently 151 members. Um, according to my homework, um, North Korea withdrew from IAEA and Besamano in 1994, but continued to cooperate with IAEA until April 2009, when North Korea expel all your inspectors. Iran and Syria, however, are members of IAEA. I go on to my second point. Let me now say a few words about Singapore and IAEA. <clears throat> you will recall that IAEA was established in 1957. Singapore joined IAEA 
in 1967, two years after our independence. Singapore has served twice on the Board of Governors of IEA um, from 1998 to the year 2000 and also from 2004 to 2006. And we will begin to serve our third term on the board beginning next month, September. Singapore is strongly opposed to the proliferation of nuclear weapons. We have also taken a very firm position on the need by all states to respect their internationally binding obligations. <clears throat> we are also committed to protecting the integrity and effectiveness of IAEA. <clears throat> on the Board of Governors, during the two previous terms when we were a member, we had tried to play a moderating and constructive role sometimes trying to bridge a gap between opposing and competing interest groups and broking, brokering compromises. Singapore has been collaborating with IAEA's Technical Cooperation Department in the area of nuclear medicine and radiation technologies. In February this year, we concluded with IAEA a country program framework to enhance our collaboration with IAEA in three areas. In the nuclear safety and security, in human health, and in the application of uh, radiation technology in the environment and in industrial radioisotopes. And third, and finally, let me just say a few words to introduce our distinguished speaker. Ambassador Amano is a grad, great graduate of Japan's uh, top university, the University of Tokyo. Before I read his CV, I thought maybe he had studied science or nuclear physics. But no, um, he studied law. And I think that he's a living example, he's another living example of the versatility of lawyers and the merit of a good legal education. Uh, Besser Amano, I couldn't avoid saying that because I was a former dean of the law school. <laughs> Ambassador Amano has had a very distinguished career in the Japanese Foreign Service. His career is quite unusual in that it has permitted him to specialize in the related areas of nuclear energy, missiles, non-proliferation, and disarmament. In the year 2005, the government of Japan appointed him ambassador and permanent representative to IAEA. And he had very good karma because in that same year, he was elected as chairman of the Board of Governors. And so in December 2005, Ambassador Amono, Amo, Amano was in Oslo, Norway to receive the Nobel Peace Prize on behalf of IAEA. The co-winner of the prize was the then Director General, Dr. Mohamed El Baradi. In July 2009, Ambassador Amano was elected as the Director General to succeed Dr. El Baradi. He is the first Asian to be elected to this important position. And I think his election at this time is propitious because according to estimates, the largest number of new nuclear power plants will be built in Asia in the coming years and decades. Ambassador Amano began his term as Director General only in December last year. But already in the first half year of his tenure, he has impressed the member states with his inclusive, consultative, and transparent style of leadership. He has selected as his special focus for his first year 
the work of IAEA, working closely together with WTO in using nuclear medicine and radiation therapy in combating cancer. And this has resonated very favorably with the member states. He has also given a very high priority to the developing countries, enhancing their capacity so that they too can benefit from the application of nuclear technologies in the area of human health, in agriculture, and environment. Uh, Ms. Amano, I've also tried to do some research about how your staff feel about you. And I'm very pleased to uh, report that the feedback I received from your staff is very favorable. They appreciate your approachability and your humility. And when I asked them, for example, they said, for example, that you would uh, frequently take your lunch in the staff cafeteria. A good practice which I commend to the bosses of Singapore. I think very few bosses in Singapore take their lunch in the staff cafeteria. It now gives me great pleasure to invite Ambassador Yukia Amano to address us. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. It is a great pleasure for me to be in Singapore and to have the opportunity to speak to you today. Professor Ko made a very good introduction on me. I am not sure if I merit uh, the, uh, such a good um, uh, remarks, uh, but um, I recognize a lot of students uh, among the audience. Um, it is true that I graduated from Tokyo University, but uh, Professor Ko didn't tell that I joined the Tokyo University twice. First, I joined the Tokyo University uh, because I wanted to become a researcher in uh, biochemistry. But after two years, I noticed uh, that I'm not talented for that. <laughs> so I changed my mind and I took the exam again. And um, next time, I joined um, at the law faculty, and this time I could manage uh, to graduate. And then uh, I joined uh, the foreign ministry. <clears throat> Today, I would like to discuss some, uh, some of the challenges uh, that um, the, uh, the IAEA uh, faces, as well as uh, the opportunities uh, which we, the IAEA, face in our work. I'll focus on three main areas, nuclear power, nuclear science and application, and nuclear non-proliferation. I became the Director General in uh, December uh, last year, and I'm not yet uh, quite accustomed to give um, lectures. So my lecture will be quite short, and, um, but after, I would like to answer uh, your questions. I love to uh, exchange views uh, with the audience, and so uh, my um, uh, prepared statement is rather short, but uh, later I would like to uh, have from, uh, real two-way discussions with you. The IAEA is often referred uh, to in the media as uh, the words nuclear watchdog. This is uh, the reference uh, to our work in nuclear non-proliferation. As many of you know, and um, as uh, uh, Professor Ko mentioned, this does not do justice to uh, the full range of activities of the IAEA. Since its establishment in 1955, the agency has, uh, has pursued two fundamental goals. One is preventing uh, the proliferation of nuclear weapons and to help, and the next, another is uh, helping to make nuclear technologies available for peaceful applications, especially to developing countries through uh, the IAEA's technical cooperation program. Now, I would like to touch upon uh, briefly on um, nuclear power. Nuclear power generation is of increasing importance to our member states. It is enjoying growing acceptance throughout the world as a stable, 
and clean source of energy that can help to reduce the impact of climate change. More than 60 countries are considering introducing nuclear power to generate electricity. According to our research, we expect between 10 and 25 countries, new countries I mean, to bring their first nuclear power plants online by 2030. Most of them, new nuclear power plants, which are being planned or already under construction, are here in Asia. I understand that there is a discussion in your country on whether Singapore should take this course or not. For some years now, the IAEA has been increasingly focusing on the needs of newcomers to nuclear power. Our goal is to assist them at every stage of the process. We provide them with impartial and objective advice on, to, on how to put the appropriate legal and regulatory framework in place and how to ensure the highest standard of safety and security and safeguards. We can also advise on the siting of nuclear reactor as well as some other construction, commissioning, startup of the operation. The end result, we hope, is that countries will be able to introduce nuclear power knowledgeably, profitably, and securely. But I would like to stress that it is the decision of each sovereign state to decide whether or not to introduce nuclear power generation. The role of the agency is to help them when requested. We do not try to influence any country into which direction they should go. We are here to help them and help you. It is, of course, important that countries with new and expanding nuclear power program should ensure the highest standard of safety and security. The agency is the custodian of main international safety and security instruments, and member states are strongly encouraged to participate actively in the global nuclear safety and security frameworks. We can, if requested, put together international expert teams to assess everything from the operational safety of nuclear power plants to the effectiveness of nuclear regulatory systems. A growing number of countries are happy to accept, invite our missions and um, to provide um, experts to engage in peer reviews of such other countries' nuclear power programs. In fact, nuclear safety has improved considerably since the Chernobyl with disaster in 1986. But the risk of accident can never eliminate it completely, and we must always be vigilant. A major safety failure at a nuclear facility anywhere in the world could present a significant setback to the expansion of nuclear power, which are now witnessing. The IAEA's expert missions to assess and improve safety are therefore especially, especially valuable. The practitioners keep each other on their toes. The necessary lessons are learned and shared at the end everyone benefits. Next issue is uh, the, uh, nuclear security. Helping to keep nuclear and radioactive materials secure is another growing area of works, of our works. Earlier this year, I had uh, the honor of attending uh, the Nuclear Security Summit in Washington, chaired with President Obama. It was very encouraging to see 
that leaders are from 47 countries, including, of course, our Prime Minister Lee, giving personal attention to the issue of nuclear security, such as um, preventing nuclear and radioactive material falling into the hands of terrorists and guarding nuclear facilities against sabotage. Responsibility for nuclear security rests with each state, but the IAEA can assist in many ways. For example, we helped to predict against possible nuclear attacks at the World Cup in South Africa this year. Uh, we have um, uh, provided uh, detectors, we have trained people, and um, um, uh, we have helped them to protect against possible nu uh, nuclear attacks. We have done the same at uh, the Beijing Olympics in 2008. We help countries to improve security and nuclear, at nuclear facilities and train border guards in how to detect smuggled nuclear materials. If you have interest, I'll come back to this issue of uh, nuclear security again in the uh, question and answer session. A lesser known area of the IES, IAEA's activity is making advanced nuclear science te and technology available to help member states to meet the basic needs of their people. This includes assistance in areas such as human health, agriculture, and management of water resources. Cancer therapy is a very good example. Just before coming here, I visited uh, the uh, hospital, your hospital specialized in cancer. For my first year as the Director General of the IAEA, I have decided to make uh, the cancer control in developing countries as the priority issue. I, I mean um, 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 that I decided to highlight the fight against cancer in developing countries. Um, um, and I'm now working uh, for that. It is widely known uh, that um, cancer has reached epidemic proportion in developing countries. In the past, it was perceived uh, that cancer is a disease in developed, uh, developed countries. But um, it, is, it is simply wrong. It is uh, perceived as such because in the past, people in developing countries did not have enough chance uh, to go screening. In developing countries, cancer kills 665 people every hour. This figure is uh, nearly three times as many in developed countries. Because of the absence of early diagnostics, most, of, um, uh, most cases are detected too late for life-saving treatment. In many low-income countries, there's not a single radiation therapy machine. As a result, around 70% of global death by cancer occur in developing countries. Um, in general, the death by cancer in the world is more numerous than tuberculosis, um, HIV, AIDS, and malaria combined. So globally, cancer is a very serious disease. In the developing country, 70% of deaths occur. Therefore, this is, in my view, a very serious global health issue. And we need uh, to address this issue. The IAEA has a disadvantage, and has, a, has an advantage. Through our program of action for cancer therapy, launched in 2004, the IAEA, working uh, with partners such as uh, WHO, has been playing an important role in improving cancer control in developing countries. The IAEA has some expertise in radiotherapy and nuclear medicine. Since 1980, we have delivered over 
220 million US dollars worth of cancer related assistance to developing countries. We provided equipment and training. We'll host a special scientific forum focusing on cancer uh, this September. This will be a very interesting uh, event. Um, I decided uh, to focus on this issue and we'll gather uh, the world leaders to enhance uh, the awareness of this issue. We'll invite uh, the representatives of international organizations. We'll invite um, doctors and we'll even invite uh, simulation patients. Um, um, this, uh, this is uh, the area. Lots of member states can reach agreement and we can see uh, the res result in two years or three years. Now I would like to uh, touch upon um, um, nuclear non-proliferation. Nuclear non-proliferation is of course the area of IAEA's work which attracts most attention. Our work is to verify that states are fully complying with their non-proliferation obligations and that nuclear material has not been diverted from peaceful nuclear activities. The world faces increasing risks of nuclear uh, proliferation. It is therefore important that the nuclear non-proliferation regime and especially the IAEA safeguard system should be strengthened. This means more and more countries bringing into force so-called additional protocol to their comprehensive safeguards agreement with the agency which give our inspectors wider authority to do their job. It, is also, it also means that the agency continuing to upgrade its technology to the most advanced levels. Additional protocol uh, is an indispensable tool for the agency to have the confidence uh, that nuclear material and uh, nuclear facilities are not used uh, for military purposes. If you have interest on additional protocols, I'll come back to this issue again in the question and answer sessions. Key safeguards issues which have been occupying the agency for some years now include uh, the nuclear programs of Iran and of North Korea. In case of Iran, the agency continues to verify that non-diversion of declared nuclear materials. But Iran has not uh, provided uh, the necessary cooperation to permit uh, the agency to confirm that all nuclear material in Iran is in peaceful activities. In order to resolve international concerns about uh, the nature of Iran's nuclear program, it is necessary for Iran to make concrete steps towards the full implementation of comprehensive safeguards agreement with the IAEA as well as other obligations. North Korea's nuclear program remains a matter of serious concern to the international community. The agency has had no inspectors in the, uh, the DPLK since they were asked uh, to leave uh, the country in April last year. We don't have any staff now. The recent increase in, uh, in tension on the Korean Peninsula reminds us that uh, the security situation in the region remains extremely sensitive and underscores the need to address uh, the nuclear issue as early as possible. I urge uh, the DPLK to fully implement all relevant nuclear non-proliferation obligations. Diplomatic dialogues in the framework such as the six party uh, talks should be resumed at an appropriate time with the ultimate aim of denuclearization of uh, the Korean Peninsula. The IAEA is ready uh, to contribute to further uh, verification, future verific verification arrangements if called upon to do so. Uh, the IAEA is uh, the only international verification um, uh, the IAEA is uh, the only international 
uh, organization which can provide uh, the credible uh, verification. Uh, therefore, in my view, the involvement of the IAEA is essential in the future verification of the denuclearization of Korean Peninsula. Ladies and gentlemen, as you can imagine, uh, the likely increase of um, increase in the number of countries uh, with a nuclear power program will mean a greatly increased uh, workload for the IAEA in the coming decades. This represents a greater challenge for the agency and for me as Director General. But I'm confident that with um, dedicated and professional staff from all over the world and uh, with, um, with the strong support from our member states, we are, we are uh, more than, um, uh, we, we are sure uh, to be able to discharge our responsibilities. In my um, uh, statement, I have not uh, touched upon uh, several issues uh, like um, uh, the question of Syria or nuclear fuel banks uh, or Tehran research reactor issues. But um, again, if you have um, um, uh, interest on these issues, I will be very happy uh, to explain the current situation on these issues. I would like to um, um, uh, stop here and I would like to uh, answer your questions. Thank you very much. Let's take up Ambassador Mano's um, willingness to engage us in a, in a dialogue. Um, before arriving in this auditorium, I ask him whether or not I could ask him the first and last question. And he very kindly said yes. So let me ask you um, the first question. In your speech, you mentioned that you had attended the Nuclear Security Summit which President Obama had convened in Washington in April this year. <clears throat> Could you just update us on what this nuclear summit achieved and what it failed to achieve? And how is President Obama's initiative relevant to the IAEA's work and to the NPT? Thank you very much uh, for that question. I attended uh, the, the Washington summit on uh, nuclear security. And um, I understand uh, the, um, uh, President Obama convened this meeting because nuclear security is a real issue. In the IAEA, we have a database. And every year, we receive about 140 um, um, uh, reports on illicit trafficking of um, nuclear material and radioactive materials. It means that every two days, we receive one report, and that report is um, uh, confirmed by countries. We do not count uh, the rumors. We count uh, the report confirmed uh, by uh, the countries, and we have one uh, report every two days. So this is a real issue. We don't know uh, if uh, this is um, tip of the iceberg or it represents the whole story. But uh, the, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the bottom line is that this is a real threat. That is why, uh, the, um, uh, that is why the IAEA uh, is strengthening um, efforts in this field, and President Obama um, convened the meeting. What was achieved, and what are needed to follow up? Um, for me, um, as uh, the Director General of the IAEA, it was very encouraging uh, that heads of 47 states gather together, concentrate on this issue, rather complicated, and support it, provided a very generous support to the IAEA. Uh, usually, people are ten, uh, tempted uh, to create new things, but in reality, it is much more effective uh, to use uh, the existing scheme. And IAEA uh, can do a lot in this field. Then what we can do and what will be the follow-up. I said uh, there are four things that we can do. Uh, first, information. Information is very important. And I said um, uh, the IEA has a database. That is the only database uh, that Word has. And um, uh, without, with the information, we can analyze the trend and we can prepare 
uh, for the response. Um, quite often people ask me, well, which is the most dangerous country? And my response is that the country that do not recognize the danger and do not have the response. And for that we need uh, information. Second, education is needed. Um, I, uh, I took the example of um, uh, border guards or uh, protection against uh, nuclear attack in uh, World Cup. Training people is needed. Uh, training, we need to train people how to use some um, uh, detectors. Um, some detectors are, are like, uh, like um, uh, Blackberry. They are small, uh, easy to, uh, to uh, operate, but training is needed. So education is needed. And um, also assistance is needed. Not every country uh, can afford nuclear detectors. So we need to um, provide assistance. Advice is also needed. Um, um, advice, because we have from, uh, international rules, international um, agreement, we need to implement it. And IAEA is well placed uh, to, uh, uh, to help them. So information, um, education, assistance, and advice are needed if you take uh, the, the first letter, IAEA. <laughs> Thank you, that was very good. Um, uh, let, let me now take questions from the floor. Yes, you please. Could you use the microphone uh, and uh, please introduce yourself to Ambassador Manu? So I'm Surya of the Hindu newspaper of India. I'm based in Singapore. So in 2008, India did a safeguards agreement with the IAEA. Are you satisfied that India is honoring its commitments? And secondly, China is now trying to sell more nuclear reactors to Pakistan. Would you, as IAEA Director General, suggest that Pakistan should enter into a safeguards agreement with the IAEA for a similar purpose? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Wow, two very yes. interesting and challenging yes. questions. <laughs> First, I would like to um, uh, share my view on uh, India. Uh, you said uh, safeguard agreement, uh, but uh, let me put it this way. Um, um, uh, uh, what was agreed um, uh, two years ago uh, was uh, the uh, change of rules of um, um, nuclear uh, suppliers group. Um, since uh, the beginning of, uh, since the middle of, um, middle of uh, 1990s, um, uh, the nuclear suppliers group had a rule not to, uh, not to allow uh, the export of ex equipment uh, to the countries that do not have comprehensive safeguard. But this is the rule of uh, nuclear safety, uh, safety group, uh, which is a completely different group uh, than uh, the IAEA. After long discussions, they have decided uh, to um, uh, uh, make uh, India as an exception um, uh, uh, to this rule. It was um, accepted, uh, decided by consensus according to the rule of procedures of NSG. First, NSG is not our organization. Uh, and um, uh, on top of that, uh, they have done, it, uh, done so uh, according to their rule and by consensus. So um, uh, this is uh, their matter, uh, but uh, that is duly adopted, and that must be, uh, 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 that is um, uh, how they decided. Regarding um, the IAEA, we don't have uh, that rule. Our role is to place um, uh, the um, um, uh, nuclear facilities and nuclear material under safeguard. In case of um, uh, non-nuclear weapon states, all the nuclear uh, material and facilities should be placed under, uh, the, under uh, the IAEA safeguards. This is the rule. In case of um, um, uh, nuclear weapon states under NPT or non-member of the NPT, this rule does not apply. Uh, it means uh, that a um, um, uh, different type of uh, safeguard is applied um, uh, facility by facility. Um, uh, responding to your direct question, um, in my view, placing more facilities of India under the IAEA, IAEA safeguard is a good thing. Uh, if, um, uh, it is better that 20 facilities, for example, are placed under safeguard. It's better than only 10 
are placed under safeguards. So uh, 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 this is my view about uh, uh, placing Indian facilities under safeguards. Regarding uh, Pakistan, um, uh, so under the existing agreement between India and IAEA, how many of India's nuclear facilities are under the IAEA safeguard system? In the past, um, uh, seven uh, was um, um, uh, placed under, um, uh, under IAEA safeguards. And um, um, after uh, the, uh, the agreement is completed, uh, 14 will be placed um, under, okay. um, under IAEA safeguards. Uh -huh. I don't uh, remember. 14 out of a total. Out of a total, how many? Um, uh, seven, uh, uh, before it was seven, after it will be 14, 14. in total. Um, I do not remember uh, the exact figure now, uh, but uh, that is between seven and uh, 14. Some progress has been made, uh, but it takes some time. Um, with some, uh, regarding, uh, the, uh, regarding Pakistan, um, Pakistan is a non-member of the NPT, and some um, uh, safeguards will be uh, uh, will be placed facility by facility. If uh, more uh, facilities will be placed under um, uh, safeguard IA safeguard, I think that is a good thing. But whether uh, to make uh, Pakistan an exception, uh, like uh, NSG did uh, uh, related to India or not, is a matter of NSG. And it is, that is not something that I can intervene. But at the moment, is there an agreement between Pakistan and IAEA yes. to subject some of Pakistan's facilities yes. to yes. safeguards? Yes, we have. So, so are they in the same position uh, as number, India with you? Um, as far uh, as IAEA is concerned. Yes. Not, not the nuclear yes. suppliers group, but you. As far with as IAEA, we, India and Pakistan are in the same position? Um, as far as we are concerned, it is the same. Uh, the number of facilities um, are put under, um, uh, the, uh, under the um, uh, safeguard is different, but uh, they are uh, not <coughs> members of the IAEA. Uh, and they are not the members of the NPT, sorry. NPT. They are not the members of the NPT. So these countries are not obliged to place all the facilities under the IAEA safeguard, but uh, they can put um, uh, some of their facilities under safeguard, and they are doing it. Um, thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, another question? Um, it, right in the back, please. Yes? You? Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. I'm Karthik. I'm a student of the uh, Lee Kuan Yew School of Public Policy. Can you speak louder? My name is Karthik. I'm from India. I'm a student at the LKY. Yes. I have a question regarding the uh, nuclear liability bill that's actually going through uh, a lot of uh, talk within India itself. Uh, I just wanted to know, the reason that it's actually being rejected continuously uh, by the various government bodies is that uh, they, they feel that it's sort of uh, short-selling the lives of uh, Indian people in terms, you know, when it comes to a nuclear accident and the liabilities that are involved. Why doesn't the IAEA actually step in and establish a uniform uh, liability clause wherever nuclear reactors are established, irrespective of, uh, you know, who the two dealing countries are? Why is it that uh, the U.S. has such a higher standard uh, in terms of uh, what the liability should be, and why is it that a country like India should settle for a lower, lower liability when it comes to... Uh, nuclear power. Okay. I mean, you did say that uh, yeah. so the IAEA is there, a, is there a model, is there a model legislation that countries like India can uh, benchmark on nu uh, nuclear liability? Yeah. Um, nuclear liability is a, a very complicated issue, and uh, there are uh, various uh, schemes on some, um, on the number of countries um, uh, that are brought into force, um, uh, ratified uh, this um, uh, conventions are limited, but uh, there exist um, uh, conventions. And um, um, according to uh, these uh, conventions, um, uh, the uh, countries uh, that have uh, nuclear facilities are obliged uh, to, um, 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 uh, uh, to um, um, uh, set aside a certain amount of money uh, to pay in case of um, accidents. But uh, there are different schemes. On some, um, um, uh, I do not have um, uh, the detailed knowledge on this issue, but uh, this, uh, uh, there are several um, conventions, and some, um, uh, there are those countries uh, who are um, um, ratified uh, to adhere to uh, one type of convention, uh, there are others, and some, um, uh, this is um, uh, very complicated, but uh, there exist uh, such conventions. And am I correct in saying that if the government of India were to ask IAEA for advice, 
you um, would be happy to provide them? Two the things. Um, uh, two things. Uh, one uh, is uh, that um, um, a country is some um, countries are encouraged uh, to uh, become members of from um, um, uh, some of um, uh, or all of um, the conventions related to liability. Second, um, um, members of uh, the countries need to enact domestic laws um, uh, um, uh, in any event it is um, uh, the, uh, the sovereign states uh, that need uh, to, uh, to pay them uh, the damage. So um, uh, these two are linked and these two are needed. Mm -hmm. Thank you. All right, a third question, a lady in the front. Then I'll come to the back. <coughs> yes. Professor Elizabeth Burleson, uh, USD School of Law. So uh, can you introduce yourself? Yes, um, my name is Elizabeth Burleson. I'm a faculty at USD School of Law and a fellow here. And I'm curious, the, this year's Commission on Sustainable Development in New York um, had testimonials from villagers from uh, Niger and elsewhere. And I was wondering if you could speak to some of the security issues of um, mining yellow cake uh, throughout the world in terms of the raw ingredients of nuclear power and to what extent um, IAEA is involved in the security issues at, at that stage of, of nuclear power. No, I, I, oh, I'm sorry, I, we, we cannot hear you. I'm sorry. Um, so Can you speak slowly and yes. clearly? Um, at the Commission on Sustainable Development this year in New York, uh, one of the core issues was the mining of yellow cake and, you know, the raw materials of nuclear power. And so people were speaking on behalf of their villages in places like Niger and talking about how some of the raw material is not uh, secure and it's falling off of trucks and young children are picking it up and playing with it and it, there are some serious concerns about the security at the, the early stages. Um, and I was wondering if IE, IAEA is involved in some of the security issues at that stage. Thank you uh, for your question. Um, um, if um, um, I understood your question well, uh, your question uh, is uh, related to the mining of uh, uranium. uranium yeah. and, um, uh, in this regard, um, IAEA is uh, providing uh, technical uh, assistance. Uh, the countries uh, like Niger, mm -hmm. um, um, uh, Namibia, mm -hmm. or Kazakhstan um, uh, come mm -hmm. um, uh, to us uh, to seek cooperation, how uh, we can safely and securely um, develop uh, their uh, uranium mines. Mm -hmm. and, um, uh, unfortunately, in the past, um, uh, there, uh, there were development uh, uh, which uh, were not um, uh, done uh, in a proper manner. Mm -hmm. So um, uh, we are happy and we are uh, providing assistance uh, to uh, and uh, giving advice uh, to uh, countries um, uh, um, uh, to, uh, to do uh, the uh, uh, development of uranium mines uh, in a proper, uh, right. proper manner. And um, uh, you mentioned um, uh, Niger, mm -hmm. and uh, I uh, just met with uh, the ambassador of Niger, and we have discussed uh -huh. it. Okay. And we are aware of this okay. question. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Anturan? Thank you, Ambassador Ko. Uh, Augustine Antwan from Channel News Asia. Ambassador, more countries are putting nuclear power on the table as a serious uh, option. So could you share your thoughts about the safe warehousing of nuclear waste? Because that's one of the main things that anti-nuclear lobby groups uh, are very vocal about. And some time ago, I saw this very interesting but provocative documentary about the middle of Australia being geologically one of the best places to house nuclear waste. But of course, the NIMBY, not in my backyard issue, kicked in and not, not many Australians are for it. But it is a very serious concern. We talk a lot about nuclear weapons and non-proliferation, but I this is an area. Um, from what I understand, um, of all the countries which are members of IAEA, only one, uh, Sweden, has, after many years of uh, research and public discussion, identified a site which will be used for the deep burial of the spent nuclear waste. 
Am I correct? Yes. And, and am I also correct in remembering that recently, the former Prime Minister of Australia, Bob Hawke, uh, made a big speech in which he said Australia could um, make a major contribution to the world by making Australia the cemetery for nuclear waste. Did, did you read about this and was, was he serious? <laughs> now, for the first question, yes. <laughs> for the second question, I heard these stories, not from, um, uh, uh, I have read these stories, um, um, not coming from, coming from Australia, Australia and other countries. But so far, um, some countries, another country takes, uh, takes, care, takes care of other countries' problem was not achieved. Um, um, re, uh, responding to your question, I agree uh, that uh, the question of uh, nuclear mm. waste is a real uh, problem. Right. Uh, starting from the day one of your operation of a nuclear power plant, you face uh, this problem, and you need uh, to, uh, to solve uh, this problem. Uh, for the time being, uh, in many countries, um, uh, uh, the, uh, the spent fuel are stored in the pond. Um, uh, some countries um, 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 uh, uh, do not reprocess, um, or many countries uh, do not um, reprocess um, uh, the, um, uh, the spent fuel, and um, uh, their um, solution is, uh, the final solution is uh, the, uh, the uh, geological um, uh, disposal, uh, deep geological um, uh, disposal. Um, then, um, um, uh, but um, um, uh, there are other countries uh, that reprocess and reduce uh, the amount of mm -hmm. nuclear waste. Um, there are many ways of uh, dealing uh, with, um, um, uh, with these issues. For them, uh, the low-level um, uh, low waste and medium-level waste, we don't have uh, the problem. And many countries are uh, safely uh, storing uh, this waste. Um, uh, for them, uh, for them high-level waste or spent fuel, um, uh, this, uh, 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 the question is uh, more delicate. Uh, but um, uh, they can, um, uh, these countries uh, can store uh, these waste um, 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 uh, in the, on land or uh, under the ground. Um, uh, nowadays, we have the technology. Uh, we have the technology, uh, but these technologies are not well known. So my idea is that IAEA uh, should uh, be able to play a role uh, to disseminate uh, the best practice uh, in the world. Um, it's up to the member states uh, to decide. And um, um, uh, um, the, uh, the, um, uh, as uh, Professor um, um, uh, course, uh, explained, um, uh, there is one country, only one country, uh, but other countries are uh, storing, um, uh, storing uh, the waste uh, safely uh, for decades. And um, um, uh, technically, uh, we can uh, we have uh, the safe um, uh, safe means, uh, but uh, that's not well known. So uh, I hope uh, that uh, IAEA uh, will um, uh, be I I I I would like to make uh, the IAEA more active in disseminating mm -hmm. in the information, uh, so that member states can make informed decision. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you. Um, well, many. May, may I just take a question from this side of the room, and I'll come back to the center. Uh, you, and then you in the back, and then come back here. Please. Can we go on? Oh, yes. 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 No problem. Yeah. Please, yeah. please introduce yourself. Uh, Director General, my name is Gregory Pang. I'm here as a private individual. Um, I have um, three questions that I'd be interested in asking you. First of all, recently there's been allegations in the media concerning nuclear proliferation towards the Union of Myanmar. I'm wondering whether your agency have any insight into this matter that you feel free to share with us. Yeah. Secondly, I'm just wondering whether um, under your leadership, um, the IEA Expo Office will look towards for the strengthening ties with regional institutions like ASEAN to create a regional approach towards the peaceful use of um, nuclear energy. And thirdly, 
I mean, once the Annex 2 of the Comprehensive Nuclear Test Ban Treaty has been ratified by all nations, what will be your agency's working relationship with the CTPTO, the Comprehensive Nuclear Test Ban Treaty Organization? Thank you. So the, um, uh, regarding the question of Myanmar, um, we have been following uh, this issue, and uh, we are certainly aware of, um, um, uh, of uh, the news report, and uh, we have contact uh, with um, uh, the government of uh, Myanmar. But at this stage, um, uh, we don't have um, um, uh, anything concrete uh, that uh, we can uh, report. Uh, the working method of the IAEA is to collect uh, information um, from various sources and ex um, uh, for uh, quite a long period of time. And, uh, we do not uh, react depending on one piece of information. We gather information, uh, we compare them, we analyze them, and uh, we uh, check if uh, uh, these pieces of information are um, consistent technically, and then uh, we uh, provide our assessment. But uh, regarding Myanmar, we are not yet at this stage, at that stage. Um, uh, regarding the approach of the IAEA, uh, we have already uh, regional um, approaches in Asia. Uh, for example, um, uh, um, uh, RCA, uh, Regional Cooperation Agreement uh, mm -hmm. in Asia, uh, is a good example. Uh, within this uh, framework, um, uh, uh, Asian countries are cooperating each other. Mm -hmm. We have another um, uh, um, um, uh, scheme uh, for uh, enhancing uh, the safety um, of, um, um, of um, uh, nuclear facilities. Uh, uh, there are uh, several um, uh, regional uh, uh, initiatives, and IAEA uh, is involved, and we are very happy about that. For the CTB team, um, um, uh, there is not um, uh, much relation with uh, the CTBT, um, uh, uh, but uh, we share uh, the same objective uh, to uh, contribute uh, to create uh, the world free of nuclear weapons. Okay. All right. Um, wait, let me see. Do, do you mind if we um, allow a visitor from Costa Rica to, to ask a question? Uh, yeah. Thank you so much. Please introduce yourself. See, uh, my name is Miguel Rojas. I'm from Costa Rica Institute of Technology. I would like more question or comment. I am an example from the technical uh, uh, cooperation program of the agency. I coordinate two projects. From the, the the project try to improve the quality of life, uh, especially the person who has uh, a skin affection. Uh, for example, uh, cancer skin. In this case, I would like to thank you the work of the agency because uh, this is a very nice example of the possible use of uh, atomic energy. Thank you. Costa Rica is very active uh, in the IEA. Mm -hmm. uh, we have from uh, a director uh, in charge of, from, uh, of our technical uh, cooperation, mm -hmm. and uh, we have from uh, the um, uh, assistant uh, to the, uh, the uh, Deputy Director General uh, for Technical Cooperation mm -hmm. um, and um, uh, your ambassador in Vienna um, uh, was um, uh, the, uh, the uh, chairman of uh, the GRULAC, uh, Latin American country groups, mm -hmm. uh, until um, quite recently. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, we um, uh, very much enjoy um, uh, cooperation with um, uh, Costa Rica. Thank you very much for your okay. contribution and comments. Okay, um, I think you've been waiting a long time. Yes, you and then. Then the gentleman at the back. Can let him ask first, then uh, Hi, uh, my name is Nopon Wan, and I'm a journalist with Reuters based in Singapore. I have uh, some questions regarding Iran, which you just touched upon. Um, over the past week, we've been hearing some good news that Iran and the U.S. Uh, may return to the talk for this nuclear, nuclear reactor again. My questions to you uh, is uh, the very three small one. One is that uh, what is the possibility that uh, Iran and the Vienna group could return for the talk in this autumn uh, for this uh, nuclear, the, the, the swap between the uh, potential fuel swap for the Tehran re uh, research reactor? Secondly, um, from uh, speaking with members of the Vienna group, do you think that Iran should stop 
enriching uh, uranium to the 20% level in order for the fuel swap to take place. And thirdly, in your latest finding, um, has Iran expanded its 20% enrichment uh, since your last report? Thank you very much. Okay. Um, this is a um, rather complicated issue. So uh, I'm afraid that I, my answer becomes a little bit long, but uh, mm -hmm. please um, uh, have patience with my, with my uh, response. Um, the uh, issue uh, that um, um, uh, the gentleman raised is uh, the provision of uh, nuclear fuel to the so-called Tehran Research Reactor. Uh, this is an old reactor provided by a uh, research reactor provided uh, by the United States before uh, the revolution. Mm -hmm. And the objective of this reactor is uh, to uh, produce um, 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 uh, um, uh, radioactive materials for medical purpose. Um, after the revolution, um, uh, the provision of uh, fuel stopped. And in the middle 1980s, uh, with um, the um, cooperation of uh, the IAEA, uh, Iran um, uh, procured uh, fuel from Argentina. Uh, but now, uh, this, um, uh, the stock of um, fuel came uh, from um, uh, uh, Argentina is running out. Mm -hmm. So, um, in June uh, last year, Iran uh, came uh, to see my predecessor, uh, Dr. Mohammed El Baladai, and um, uh, expressed his hope um, uh, to uh, buy fuel on the market and uh, asked assistance uh, by the IAEA. Mm -hmm. Under the statute, IAEA um, has a role uh, to, to play to facilitate uh, the uh, procurement of um, a nuclear fuel to the member states. Mm -hmm. uh, therefore, um, uh, uh, Dr. El Baladai started uh, to uh, look into the matter. Unfortunately, um, uh, by one reason or another, uh, there has been no country uh, that uh, are willing uh, to uh, sell uh, fuel uh, to uh, Iran. Um, therefore, in October last year, um, uh, my predecessor, Dr. El Baladai, made a proposal. Uh, the idea is uh, to ship out uh, the um, um, uh, low enriched uranium uh, in Iran to uh, Russia. Russia. And, uh, that is, uh, level of enrichment is about 3.5%. Uh, Russia enriches it up to 20% and ship it to France. And uh, France manufacture uh, the 20% um, um, uh, uh, enriched uranium uh, to um, uh, nuclear fuel uh, and send it back uh, to uh, Iran. At one moment, uh, uh, mm -hmm. everyone believed uh, that it went well. Mm -hmm. uh, but in reality, it was not that easy. Uh, Iran started uh, to wonder if uh, they ship out um, uh, the fuel, uh, enri uh, sorry, uh, enriched uranium to Russia, that may never come back. The fuel never be got. Mm -hmm. uh, this um, um, uh, uh, indicates the lack of confidence among and countries. Trust, yeah. Lack of confidence is uh, the, uh, the, uh, the basic problem on uh, Iranian nuclear issues, and it applies to this issue. I succeeded um, uh, this issue, and I have been um, um, uh, talking with um, uh, our Iranian partner and other countries. And some, um, 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 as some, uh, Iran uh, was not willing uh, to ship out its material uh, to Russia, uh, at one moment it was um, uh, like a deadlock. Uh, but um, um, uh, in May, um, uh, on the 17th of May, um, uh, Brazil, um, and Turkey, uh, yeah. Turkey and Iran got together mm -hmm. in Tehran and uh, made a declaration. Uh, three foreign ministers uh, uh, signed a declaration. Uh, the essence of this um, uh, declaration is that instead of um, uh, ex uh, shipping out 1,200 kilograms of low enriched uranium to Russia, uh, they um, uh, ship out uh, the material uh, to Turkey. Um, if um, Iran uh, mm -hmm. cannot get the fuel from France at the end, then uh, Iran will get back um, uh, this mm -hmm. um, uh, material from Turkey. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, uh, this was uh, the proposal. And um, um, uh, Iran confirmed um, uh, this um, agreement and informed us on the 24th of May. And I immediately uh, transferred uh, that um, uh, letter 
to the three countries, uh, United States, Russia, and France. Um, and um, 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 I waited uh, the response, and on the 9th of June, I got a response from these countries uh, that uh, they are ready uh, to uh, the dialogue, and uh, they, um, uh, they put some questions. On some, um, some, uh, last week, on the uh, 26th of July, I got a response uh, from Iran that uh, they are ready uh, to have a, a dialogue. Mm -hmm. um, and unfortunately, I had to come to here, uh, mm -hmm. so I had to stop, I had to stop um, mm -hmm. uh, my um, um, uh, communication with them. Uh, but uh, on my return home, mm -hmm. I will resume uh, my talks uh, with them. And the um, uh, point is that everyone, um, I am supportive. I am supportive um, 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 uh, to this, um, uh, to this um, 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 uh, dialogue uh, uh, meeting to have a constructive discussions. Um, and the countries um, um, like uh, Iran is some um, is some uh, positive. Uh, United States, uh, United States, uh, Russia, France um, uh, are positive, um, and uh, um, uh, we have to consider the role of. Uh, Brazil and Turkey, perhaps, um, in the future. Now, uh, there are a couple of issues uh, that we need to uh, sort out, uh, but um, I hope uh, that um, um, uh, we'll have a meaningful, constructive um, uh, meeting. How, what will be the outcome? I want to know. I don't know uh, the answer yet, but starting uh, the dialogue is uh, very important because on this issue of, this is not a um, uh, imp safeguard implementation issue, uh, but um, so far, um, uh, channel of dialogue was um, very weak or non-existent. If we can have a discussion on this issue, uh, that was a um, positive uh, progress towards, and we'll see. And this is where we stand now. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Um, it's 6.30, so I think I have to bring this to a I'll just take, wait, you in the back, huh? and I'll take the last two questions. Uh, yes. Your Honor, Peter Ho. Okay, I'm going to uh, relate two observations. One observation is, um, you know, the use of conventional energy, that is non-nuclear energy, has... Sorry, could, could you, do you, have, do you have a question? Uh, yes, uh, that to follow my two observations. <laughs> okay, um, the harms to the nature, the air, the water, and the human, all right? So the development of the for example, I mean, we are saying that in you know, the building of this uh, nuclear power plant, the use, harnessing of nuclear technology is inevitable and imperative. Now, the world will see, you know, many power, power plants to come up. Now, in terms of this um, nuclear security, the NPT, this is as inevitable and as, in, as inevitable because of the balance in the hearts of these people, right? But to leave them alone will cause a lot of detriment to the world, to the mankind. So may I, the question follow is, actually is my suggestion, but I put it as a question. Could IAEA push the frontier up from this earth, use the power of nuclear energy from away from this petrol, from mine, from all this technology, push our frontier into the space. Nuclear technology is so powerful, if you could make, lift this energy into this space. I'll give you one example I'm thinking. Man could fry with the nuclear technology because of the remote power. I got it from the wireless, you know, the like mobile. So nuclear technology, you put a motherboard, in the space, a man could fly with a propeller and whatever gadget you put on the wing, things like that. So I'm saying that you, know, you can use the technology to have the space vehicles, spacecraft, and things like that. So what I'm suggesting... Okay, can, you, can you just come straight to your question? What I'm suggesting is yes. IAEA, could we, when we cannot you know, stop this NPT, we could not stop this non-proliferation. Can we push the research into this nuclear technology to push our Earth frontier to the space? Okay, and that will be okay. okay. 
Please. All right, let, let's, let's hear the, the remaining two questions before I ask Ambassador Mano to answer. Yes, you. Uh, first of all, I would like to congratulate your excellent presentation and your answers. Uh, my question to you is that since there are so many problems with the international legal framework or international legal regime uh, for the non-proliferation, and in your opinion, uh, how to improve the international law in this field to promote the safety and security of the nuclear uh, non-proliferation. And my second question is that uh, since Japan is uh, a very developed country, a ver an, in, it has advanced technology, and it is estimated that Japan can easily uh, turn the seaward technology into making a nuclear weapons. So my question is that uh, has Japan a sound legal regime to prevent its seaward technology into a nuclear weapons? Okay, thank, you. thank you. Thank you. Okay, the last, the last one, yeah. Good evening, sir. My name is Saurav Roy, and I represent the Al Jazeera Center for Studies, which is a part of the Al Jazeera News Network in the Middle East, in Doha, Qatar. Uh, I have two very short and crisp questions. One is, considering an ever-changing flux in the Middle East in relations and the, the dynamics of the politics in the Middle East, how much of a challenge is it for the IAEA to implement the safeguard agreements of the NPT in the Syrian Arab Republic? considering that Syria strongly backs extremist organizations like Hezbollah supporting Hassan Nasrallah and at the same time also provides support to Hamas in Gaza, uh, also gets a backing from Iran. Um, the second part of the question is, um, in 2009, IAEA concluded and implemented an agreement with the Russian Federation to establish a reserve of low enriched uranium for supply to the agency for its member states. However, the matter of the fact also remains that Russia, along with North Korea and China, have been alleged to uh, grant technical assistance to Iran for the development of its solid fueled as well as liquid fueled missiles like the Gardar 1, the Shahab range of missiles, and the Sajil 2 missiles. So, how does IAEA maintain a proper parity when it comes to adjudicating nations like Russia? Okay. 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 So, um, there are Lots of questions, and some questions are very difficult uh, to answer. First question is um, whether IAEA should put uh, the nuclear energy to space. Um, for this, I don't have the answer, good answer. Um, I'm not a scientist, and I don't have that much imagination, so I would like to leave it uh, to a talented scientist to provide the answer. For the second question uh, about... Um, 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 uh, what we can do uh, 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 to yes, implement uh, the uh, safety and security uh, and the, uh, enhancing, uh, strengthening uh, the international law. In this regard, I have to say very important thing. Uh, the responsibility uh, to ensure safety and security is uh, the responsibility of each sovereign state. IAEA can help them, but it is, uh, IAEA cannot ensure safety and security on behalf of the member states. Therefore, member states wish uh, to, uh, to negotiate and to uh, conclude a legally binding uh, treaty on safety and security, that, can, that is doable. But at this stage, we are not at this stage. Uh, IAEA has no legally binding guidelines, um, uh, standards, code, and um, uh, we, uh, we provide peer reviews. But uh, that is where I stand now. In the future, I don't know. Uh, but on the legal aspect, <coughs> these are not yet uh, legally binding. Next question Third is question about Japan. Yes. 
Uh, next question is um, uh, about um, um, uh, Japan going for um, a nuclear weapon state. Um, uh, first, um, uh, Japan is a member of the NPT, and uh, we are not allowed uh, to uh, develop nuclear weapons. Second, Japan has some um, uh, lots of um, uh, domestic laws, uh, starting from uh, the basic law uh, for the peaceful use of uh, nuclear energy, and um, uh, anyone um, uh, who uh, tries uh, to uh, use some um, uh, uh, nuclear technology other than peaceful uh, purpose is punished. Uh, Japan has been um, uh, under uh, safeguards uh, for the case, and um, uh, we have the report uh, from the IEA, but in, um, uh, and now I'm issuing the report now that um, all the activities, uh, Japan has uh, the additional protocol and uh, comprehensive safeguard, and um, uh, our inspectors uh, came to the conclusion that all the activities in Japan are exclusively uh, for peaceful purpose. Uh, therefore, I don't have any reason uh, to suspect uh, that uh, Japan uh, is developing or will develop nuclear weapons. Um, for Middle East and Syria, Syria um, is some, um, uh, has a uh, problem of um, uh, the uh, bombarded site of Daya al -Zul. Uh, this uh, Daya al zul site is, um, uh, uh, is uh, suspected of um, having been uh, the um, uh, uh, nuclear facility uh, which was bombarded uh, by Israel. Uh, we have sent uh, mission inspectors once, and uh, we have taken um, uh, environmental samples, and we have found uh, some uh, traces of particles. But um, uh, so far, uh, we have um, um, uh, not um, identified the origin of um, uh, the, the particle. Um, uh, some argued uh, that um, uh, this is um, um, uh, because of um, uh, the, uh, the um, uh, depleted uranium bombs uh, used uh, by Israel, uh, but according to analysis, it is very unlikely. Um, uh, the facility itself is very likely uh, to be a um, 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 uh, nuclear facility, but at this stage, we don't have uh, the definite um, uh, evidence uh, to that effect. Um, but um, uh, Iran, uh, Syria um, uh, is some, um, uh, while uh, we have um, uh, these um, um, uh, problems, we are now um, uh, asking uh, Syria to cooperate further uh, with us. And uh, Iran, uh, Syria is implementing comprehensive uh, safeguard. Iran does not have additional protocol, but Iran is implementing um, um, uh, comprehensive uh, safeguard. Um, regarding the activities of Hezbollah and others, it is not under my, my mandate. Um, uh, for the last question. Is last question. Russia. Russia. Um, um, Russia, let me explain uh, just a little bit. Uh, in the IAEA, and now uh, the question of um, um, uh, nuclear fuel supply assurance is being uh, discussed. Uh, the reason is that, uh, as I said in my statement, some 60 countries have interest in, uh, in uh, starting a nuclear uh, uh, power generation. Mm -hmm. If that is the case, uh, it is natural that uh, people wonder what will happen uh, if um, um, uh, the market is disrupted and, and they will uh, be no longer able uh, to uh, procure uh, nuclear fuel. One of the uh, possible um, solutions is uh, to set up um, a nuclear fuel bank. And um, uh, the Russian resolution uh, um, uh, is um, uh, based on this idea. Uh, Russia provides um, uh, low enriched uranium, uh, store it uh, in their facility uh, on their uh, expense, and uh, those countries, um, uh, um, and they make, uh, they make uh, their material, low enriched uranium, available uh, to IAEA, and uh, we will uh, provide uh, that material uh, to the, uh, the uh, member states uh, if requested. Uh, I signed this agreement uh, uh, in March uh, this year. Um, uh, uh, there are some other ideas, and um, uh, there are uh, discussions. But um, um, uh, on the other hand, uh, there is a strong uh, skepticism on this idea, and uh, we have not yet um, um, uh, come to the conclusion. Uh, my view is that uh, if we, um, um, uh, the uh, nuclear fuel bank is one of the options. 
Whether uh, to establish it or not is, uh, the, uh, in, uh, is depends on the intention of member states. However, if we have discussion on this issue, that should be in the IAEA, because if we discuss it, uh, we can have a um, discussion on equal footed basis. Uh, we can have a discussion with all the transparency. Uh, uh, but um, uh, it's up to the member states, and now the chairman of the board is consulting with member states how to discuss um, uh, the matter. And um, 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 uh, some questions uh, were raised regarding uh, Russia, uh, but uh, Russia, um, Russia proposed this proposal according to the rules of procedures. It was adopted uh, um, uh, by vote, and I was empowered uh, to sign in, and it was signed. Um, Iran has some, uh, some activities which might have um, uh, uh, military implications. I said, uh, I carefully um, I chose my word, activities that might have military implications. I'm not saying Iran has nuclear weapon programs. We don't have that um, uh, conclusion. But uh, we need to clarify because uh, we have some concerns. Um, uh, but um, um, uh, nothing has been decided, and uh, just we need uh, to uh, clarify uh, the matter at this stage. And involvement uh, of um, a particular country is not indicated in my report. Are you too exhausted to answer no. one more question? <laughs> Okay, I, I, yes. you, asked me, you gave me permission to ask you a final question. Um, in the case of Singapore, until two, three years ago, the idea that Singapore might consider nuclear power was unthinkable. But in the last couple of years, there's the beginning of a public discourse on whether we should explore the feasibility of nuclear power. However, members of the Singapore public um, are concerned. They are concerned, one, on whether nuclear power is safe. They remember with horror the accidents in Chernobyl, Three Mile Island. So could you say something on nuclear safety? They also worry about whether we have the space to have a nuclear power plant. There's a conventional wisdom that you need a cordon sanitaire of, uh, I don't know how many kilometers around a nuclear power plant. So the question is, given how small Singapore is, where could we locate a nuclear power plant? So how do we take away the emotion from this public discourse and conduct a rational conversation towards undertaking a feasibility study? Thank you very much uh, for this question. Um, uh, let me put it uh, this way, um, um, starting from the uh, easy question. Distance. There is not a such a role in the IAEA uh, that a uh, nuclear uh, power station, power plant, should be constructed um, uh, keeping some distance uh, from uh, the populated area. Uh, there, okay. there is not um, uh, such a role. And in reality, in many countries, um, in some countries at least, uh, nuclear power plants are constructed and operating uh, with um, uh, close uh, to uh, the um, uh, the uh, urban uh, area. Uh, I give you a couple of examples. Um, uh, in Japan, uh, we have Shimane uh, nuclear power plant and Tokai number two um, nuclear power plant. They are 10 kilometers from the city, and the next one is 15 kilometers uh, from the city. This is not a particular situation in Japan. Uh, in the uh, United Kingdom, Haitian uh, nuclear power plant uh, is located uh, some 15 kilometers uh, from uh, the uh, very populated area. So the distance is not uh, the problem. Uh, first, I would like to make this point uh, clear. Next, regarding uh, the safety, uh, as I said uh, in, uh, in, the, um, uh, in my statement, um, we cannot completely uh, eliminate uh, the uh, risk of accident. It is not only in the case of, um, in the case of um, nuclear power plant. Uh, we have the um, problems of oil. Uh, we have seen uh, the uh, spill of uh, oil in uh, the, um, uh, the of Gulf Mexico. of Mexico. Every, any, anything has a company, uh, certain risks. So the problem is how we can contain this risk. That's the point. Regarding uh, the, uh, the uh, uh, nuclear power plant, um, it made enormous um, progress in safety 
since the 1986 Chernobyl accident. Uh, first, uh, the um, uh, type of um, reactor is much more advanced. Um, uh, we now uh, call uh, the uh, generation three reactors. They are much safer uh, than uh, the previous type. That is number one. Second, um, uh, we, cannot, we cannot decide on the safety of nuclear power plant only by design. Very important thing is human factor. In any um, um, uh, accident, mm -hmm. human factor is important. Therefore, we need to train people. Mm -hmm. uh, the people who uh, work uh, with nuclear power plant should be very well trained and should be very vigilant uh, any time. A very uh, well qualified human resource is needed. And I believe uh, that um, uh, uh, you have very good human resource in Singapore. Third, construction is also important. It is uh, like the house. Even though the design is, uh, is nice, if the construction workers are sloppy, the job, mm -hmm. the, the, uh, the, uh, the uh, plant is not good. Yeah. Uh, this happens very, uh, very often. Um, uh, nuclear power plants need to pour uh, a, a particular type of concrete, mm. and that's not easy. So um, um, uh, professional work is needed. Also, um, 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 uh, we need welding uh, is, um, is very important. And in case of um, UAE, um, uh, Korea uh, was awarded the contract, yeah. and they are now trying uh, training the local uh, workers uh, to, uh, to improve their skills. So skill and uh, meticulous work is needed. Uh, I, let me repeat um, that now, now, uh, the safety of uh, nuclear power plant uh, is, um, um, is, um, is um, uh, uh, the uh, nuclear power plant is much safer than before. Uh, the nuclear power reactors now enjoy uh, 14,000 um, uh, reactor years. Uh, for, it means for a long time, a nuclear power uh, reactor, nuclear uh, power plant operated without accident. Uh, design has developed. Um, uh, good um, uh, human resources needed uh, to ensure good operation and good construction needs. Uh, it depends on each state to decide, but uh, if these conditions are satisfied, uh, you can uh, have a credible assurance of safety. Um, I think all of you are like me, extremely impressed right, by the, the patience of Ambassador Amano, his willingness to answer every question to the best of his ability, the candor with which you have spoken to us. It's been, for me, a master class. So you please join me in giving a big round of applause. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Paul. Very good. Uh, I learned a lot from you.